A lot of software engineers have pet projects outside of their day job, and that's great. But most pet projects stay as pet projects. Here's my advice. You should treat every pet project you work on as a side hustle or a startup because the process of taking a pet project to something that earns even just a few dollars in revenue will teach you infinitely more than what your day job can. Let me explain. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. If you're new here, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have about 20 years of experience in the industry where I've held diverse software engineering roles and created a few tech startups. And I'm currently at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Engineering with Utsa for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. Don't take me wrong, having a regular 9-to-5 job is great. It's a very structured environment where you get to learn new technologies and build your leadership as well as interpersonal skills. You generally don't have to worry about how the product is making profit, you don't have to engage with the customers, and you don't have to worry about setting up the infrastructure. It is a very sandboxed environment set up in a way that allows you to contribute to the best of your abilities but also caters for your own personal growth. But that sandboxed environment also prevents you from learning a lot of other valuable skills. That is where side projects shine. So here are six great reasons why you should definitely invest your time in pursuing side hustles. There is no sandbox for your side hustle. There is no infrastructure and because it's a side hustle, most likely you also don't have the capital to hire someone else to build any of that for you. So you have to do it all by yourself. You do the design, you implement it, you deploy it, you release it, and if you're lucky enough to have customers, you make sure that your production environment is secure and stays up and running. You'll have to learn about the best security practices, deployment and release pipelines, environment clusters, redundancies, recovery, set up a process to make hot fixes and rollbacks, and so much more. You could build the best product in the world, but obviously that means nothing if no one is using it. So you'll have to think about branding, marketing, customer acquisition, and retention. But it does not stop there. As a single member startup, you will have to wear the hat of an accountant, a financial analyst, as well as a tax professional. You will learn about company structures like sole proprietorships, partnerships, and S-Corps, and the pros and cons of each. You'll also learn about various tax breaks you get as a business owner, and also tax advantage investment options like SEP IRA. For example, for my YouTube channel, most people think that all I do is post videos, but that is far from the reality. I do the bookkeeping, I have to run the payroll, and I even have to pay myself because it's set up in a way where I'm an employee of my own company. I handle all the legalities of the S-Corp and I have to understand all the tax implications as well. I would have not learned any of this if all I did was my day job. Your work network is great and I highly encourage you to build that network as much as possible. But the biggest limitation of a work network is that it is very limited in scope. You are a software engineer and you meet a lot of other software engineers. But when you take your own product from idea to market, you get to expand that network to areas beyond just software engineering. I'll give you a few examples. Through my YouTube journey, I've met so many other YouTubers from all walks of life. Um, these are all entrepreneurs and I have a WhatsApp group of over 300 YouTubers with channels ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions of subscribers. Um, these are people I can always lean on for advice, whether that's related to YouTube or business in general. Through my other startup ventures, I've also gotten to know a few VCs as well who continually invest in new tech startups. One of my startups was even advised by Jason Robbins, who is the founder and CEO of DraftKings, the biggest sports betting company in the world. Chances are slim that you'll get to meet and network with such a diverse set of people just through your day job. I mentioned this earlier in the video too, but a product or a feature is useless if no one is using it. So the question is, how do you build the right product or the features? There are many processes to gather data and feedback to inform this decision, but a lot of it is also intuition. And that intuition builds after a lot of trial and error of trying to take a product to market. The first idea that pops in your head isn't your best idea, even if it feels that way. The idea that eventually gets executed will be very different from your initial thought, sometimes even entirely different. So how do you know when to push through or when to pivot or when to let it go completely? 
Well, by doing this process over and over again. Over time, you'll start building an intuition for what feels right. Of course, it does not replace data-driven decisions, but it can give you a really good start. One of my startups was a marketplace, basically where buyers and sellers interact within your application and both parties are your customers, sort of like how Uber operates. Both the riders and the drivers are customers of Uber. Our product was great, the features were spot on, but the biggest issue we faced was that most sellers had app fatigue, where they were tired of having to use yet another app to run their business. And these were mostly restaurants, most of them small mom and pop shops, and they already had Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, and a few more, and they were exhausted of having to learn new systems even if it meant more profit for them. Marketplaces are hard to begin with because you need to keep two opposing sets of customers happy within one ecosystem and you always run into the chicken or the egg problem. But out of everything we thought we would struggle with, this was the last thing we anticipated. But we learned a lot from that experience. So now when anybody talks about a marketplace or pitches me an idea that involves a marketplace, I have yet another data point or the intuition to suggest that marketplaces are hard. Speaking of building the right product, using the right tools can make a huge difference because in a fast-paced world of tech innovation, the process of taking an idea to an actual product is often filled with a lot of unknown. It requires more than just creativity. It requires structure, collaboration, and visualization. That's where today's sponsor Miro can help. Miro is an online platform that provides a digital canvas where users can create, collaborate on, and share various types of content such as diagrams, charts, sticky notes, images, and much more. You can use Miro for brainstorming, planning, project management, and design thinking. It offers real-time collaboration features, allowing multiple users to work on the same board simultaneously from different locations. Whether you're a startup founder, a product manager, a software engineer, or a seasoned designer, Miro provides the perfect platform to bring your vision to life. From the spark of an idea to the final product launch, Miro can aid you in every step of the way. With Miro's flexible canvas, you can capture and organize ideas in a way that makes sense to your team. Customize templates, use sticky notes for brainstorming sessions, create detailed diagrams, the possibilities are endless. And it's just not about generating ideas, it's about turning them into actionable plans. With Miro, you can map out your product roadmap, set milestones, and assign tasks, all in one collaborative space. No more endless email chains or confusing spreadsheets, just clarity and alignment. But the journey doesn't just end there. As you move forward, Miro keeps everyone on the same page, ensuring the deadlines are met and goals are achieved. It's like having a virtual project manager by your side, guiding you every step of the way. So if you're interested, visit the link in the description below to learn more about how Miro can help turn your ideas into reality. Thanks to Miro for sponsoring this video. Finance is a huge part of having a successful career. Sure, a lot of what you do may be things that you are really passionate about, but if there wasn't a potential for profit, 99% of businesses wouldn't exist. I occasionally get hate comments on YouTube when I have sponsored videos, but without sponsors, I wouldn't be able to run this channel. I am passionate about providing valuable information to you guys for free, and that's why I continue to make these videos. But sponsors make all of this financially feasible. A business needs to make profit to be able to provide meaningful value to its customers. And the same idea applies to any side hustle. They will teach you many different ways you can use your engineering skills to pursue something you're passionate about and yet earn an income out of it. And if you're lucky enough to make that income passive, it greatly improves your financial outlook, which then buys you more time to invest on other ideas that you're passionate about. It is a repetitive process that adds up to give you a lot of financial freedom where working is a choice, not a requirement. You get to choose the projects you pursue and take risks where they're needed. With just a nine to five job, you may be earning a lot, but it's still your day job. Your income is directly proportional to your input and that income will never become passive and it will only grow linear. With side hustles though, you never know if one of them will hit it big. Remember that many of the top tech companies we have today started as simple side hustles. The biggest mental tax in day-to-day -day productivity is our inability to switch context rapidly. Our brain is naturally designed to work on one thing with a high degree of focus. So when we need to switch context frequently, we lose focus and productivity. It is difficult at first, but once you get enough experience at working at multiple side hustles alongside your day job, you get really good at context switching while remaining effective at doing a lot of different things throughout your day. So even if none of your side hustles provide any meaningful outcome, they will 
will definitely make you an expert at juggling things. And this can be really beneficial even for your day job, as a parent, or for non-work related things. Some of the most successful people I know are amazing at this. Consider Ali Abdal, for example, who runs one of the most successful channels on productivity and currently has around five and a half million subscribers. The thing is that he started the channel as a full-time doctor with a 60 hour per week work schedule. Imagine tending to all of your patients all day, going home and then talking about how to effectively take notes. At the same time, he also had another tech company that helped people study for standardized tests. Being a doctor, running a successful YouTube channel, successful podcast, a repeating six-week cohort, teaching people how to create YouTube channels, giving talks and keynote speeches all over the world managing various other businesses related to test prep and stationary products, investing in other companies, and not to mention, he also just recently launched his book on productivity. I wouldn't blame you if you thought that there is simply not enough time in the day to do all of this. But this is what juggling multiple side hustles for many years gives you, the ability to completely switch context and still remain very effective at getting things done. So if you were on the fence about investing your time on a passion project or an idea you have, I hope this video gives you enough reason to go for it. Even if nothing comes out of it, you will learn so many valuable lessons that will make you a much better software engineer, entrepreneur, and in general, a highly productive person. Check out this video I made on the lessons I learned from creating a multi-million dollar tech startup or if you're interested in the software engineering side of things, check this other video out where I talk about the 10 biggest lessons I've learned in my software engineering career. Please like this video if you found it useful and let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on side hustles. For more videos aimed at helping you holistically grow your software engineering career, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.